I gave you all sorts of uh, 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 additional notes there. Uh, I, I just kind of put this together because last week we didn't quite finish, and I wanted to go back and review and then talk about the rest of what we didn't get to last week on 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let me pray. Father, thank you for uh, the wonderful folks that are here today. Thank you for your word through Paul that helps us to see who we are and the ministry that you've given us. Father, today may I decrease that you might increase. I pray, God, that you would create in the hearts of all those that are here a hunger for your word. In the, in the uh, uh, Beatitudes, he says, for those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Give us a hunger and a thirst for your word, God. To be people who study and read and, most of all, apply your word. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to start reading at verse number 6. And then I'll read through, and then we're just going to kind of walk through the rest of this. Some of it we will be reviewed. But at verse number 6, he says, For God who said that light shine out of darkness, made his light shine where? In our hearts, to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. At verse number 7, which is going to be kind of the key verse that we're going to uh, work off of, says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and is not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We're, we're perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We're always carrying around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal bodies. So then, death is, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have this, excuse me, since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak because we know, I love that, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us up with Jesus and present us to you himself, to us with you himself. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, because of all those things that we just read, we don't lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Listen to 17. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporal or temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah. Now, look at number one on your, uh, well, let me go, let me just do one other thing before we get to that. Look, on, look at the right-hand side there. It says, be, Paul begins this chapter by saying, because we have this ministry, because uh, 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 God, had, God called me to be a disciple. It wasn't a, a vocation I chose. It wasn't because my dad was a pastor, I became a pastor, or my, my mom wanted me to be one. But God chose me to this ministry. And because God has chosen me and entrusted me, remember he said, he's entrusted to me. He found me trustworthy. To have this, this ministry, I won't lose heart. Because God's given me this 
ministry, I won't use deceptive practices to try to fool people or trick people. Because God has given me this ministry, we don't use self-promotion. It's not about me. It's about the Word of God. In fact, he said, uh, we preach not ourselves, but we preach Christ Jesus. Because God has given us this ministry, we don't promote ourselves. We're only servants. Who is Paul? Who is Apollos? We're only servants that God uses for his purposes. We plant the seed, somebody else waters, but God brings the increase. Yeah. So that's where we kind of were. And then, let me take you back. One of the knocks against Paul was that he was weak, that he was uh, uh, not a very good speaker. In fact, to look at him, he didn't look like some robust guy. And so the Judaizers is saying, hey, we, we had some questions about your apostleship. So in, in number one on the green sheet, it says, consider how Paul answers his critics. His critics are saying he's nothing, he's weak, he's not very attractive. And this is how he answers. You're right, I'm nothing. The critics are saying, hey, Paul, you're, you're nothing. You don't even preach. You write these strong letters, but in person you're timid. You're weak. And he said, you're right. I am weak. How many of us would answer our critics that way? <laughs> Are you getting it? Just someone come and say, Rob, you're the ugliest thing I've ever seen. And I would say, you're right. I think that's a, that, I used to tell my, 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 my boys all the time, if, if people are saying things to you, don't answer. Because they want to get under your skin. They want to provoke you. And as soon as they provoke you, they're going to say, aha, I told you you weren't no real disciple. So he answers like this. You know what? I am nothing. And look, look what he says. But, but number three says, uh, uh, I'm just a jar of clay. And in Paul's time, uh, the, clay, the clay containers were cheap containers. And they were used for garbage. Look what I wrote. It says the clay containers in Paul's time were cheap. They were common. They were easily replaceable. They didn't have great value. They were, they were usually ugly because they just had utility for putting junk in. Paul said, I'm just this jar of clay. Nothing special about me. Nothing pretty about me. I'm just used for garbage. And so imagine, I put that number four, Imagine the quandary this puts the Juda Judaizers in because they look at Paul and Paul has come to Corinth and preached the word of God and a church is formed. Paul has gone to Philippi, 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 Philippi. Paul has gone to all these, all these missionary journeys. Paul has been shipwrecked. Paul has been beaten. So this jar of clay, this nothing guy, how do you explain all that he's able to be able to have, have had accomplished in his life and his ministry being nothing? And the only answer is God. Look, look at Paul, Paul, look at verse number seven. But we have this treasure in jars of clay. Ain't nothing special about us. We're just jars of clay to show that the all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians that God uses the weak things of this world to confound those that are wise. So why would God use a little black boy from Louisiana to preach the gospel? Why would he use just ordinary people? Why would he use a shepherd? Why would he use someone that society would say ain't nothing? He didn't come and pick the, the most 
wealthiest. He didn't come and pick those that had the greatest education. He used ordinary people. And so Paul says, the treasure is not us. The treasure is not me. The treasure is what's in me. The Holy Spirit is in us. God's light is in us. So how do you explain all the converts? How do you explain all the journeys that I've been on? How do you explain all the life and death situations that I've been in and God has brought me through? There's only one answer. God. Look at this verse. I'm going to show you a couple of verses on the screen. Here's one of my favorite verses in Nehemiah, chapter 6, verse 15. It says, so the wall was finished on the 25th day of that in 52 days, Nehemiah comes back to Jerusalem and rallies the people, and they build a wall in, two, uh, two, two, in 52 days. And it happened when all our enemies heard of it, and all the nations around us saw these things, that they were very disheartened in their own eyes, for they perceived that the work was done by our God. And that should be all of our testimony. That people would see the work that's happening at New Caesars Church and know, well, Jackson ain't smart enough to get that done. John Taylor's not smart enough to get that done. It has to be, it has to be God. Are you hearing me? I'm just a, 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 I'm just a darker clay pot. Are you hearing me? And what's special about me is that God lives in me. What's special about me is that God called me to do this. What's special about you is that God lives in you. Amen. And whatever you accomplish, you can't raise your hand and say, yes, I did it. No, you didn't. It was God. Amen. And so Paul answers his critics, hey, I'm not but a clay pot. Are you getting it? Amen. Yes. Amen. To God be all the glory. And look what he said back in chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians. Such confidence we have through Christ before God. Listen, he says, not that we are confident in ourselves to claim anything of ourselves, but our competence. It comes from God. Amen? Amen. So look at number 5. So Paul admits that what was valuable was the treasure inside the jars. And the power was from God and not from them. And he uses the word them. Did you notice that? In Bible study, we're going to learn in the Dutch Bible study, you notice words. Why does he use the word them? Well, in, in, in verse 7, he actually used the word us. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Because he wasn't, he wasn't indicating that the, the, that was just him. It was. Oh, and all the people that were traveling with him, Paul and Silas and all those other guys, they, they also, he said, the power is not from us. Even though we've done this ministry together, it's not us. It's, it's God. Amen. Here's the second part. We were talking about the fact that the quandary that the Judaizers had was that, uh, another quandary that the Judaizers had was that uh, Paul goes on, number six, Paul goes on to speak of his sufferings. The Ju Judaizers didn't suffer at all. All they did was come into town and say, oh, that stuff that Paul told you, that was all good, but you have to get circumcised too. So they drew away people by deception. But when it comes to suffering for the, for the gospel, listen to what Paul said. Paul said, uh, I want to know Jesus. I want to know God. 
in the power of his resurrection. Now, all of us want to know, know God in the power of his resurrection, don't we? Everybody want to have power. I want to go around touching people. Ha, ha. I, want, I want people just my shadow heal people. We want the power. But, Paul, but if you want to know Jesus, Paul said, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. So if you really want to know God, it's not just the good part. Oh, he rose from the dead. No, but he also suffered for you and I. And Paul said, the suffering that I'm suffering is not just for me, but it's for all y'all in Corinth as well. Amen. So the Judaizers said, you know, we don't, have no, we don't want no part of no suffering. But Paul's saying, look at what it says. <clears throat> Paul was saying in verse number, number seven, note says, Paul was made effective in his, in his ministry through suffering. Paul said he was made more effective in his ministry. Remember chapter one. He said, I want to tell you, brothers, about the, 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 the trials I had in Asia. He said, I almost died. We thought we were going to die, but we learned to depend on God and not on ourselves. That was a lesson. And a Judaizer wouldn't have that lesson because they hadn't gone through it. <laughs> are you hearing me? So those are, like, 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 I tell you, I tell you this, sometimes people can hear it, tired of hearing me, but I grew up in Louisiana, poor and black. We had an odd house. We, we, we had cardboard in the window. We had tin roofs that leaked that we had to put pots out to catch the water. I had to go outside and cut wood to burn in a wood stove. And if the wood was wet, we had to dry it in the stove first before we could burn it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, that kind of life builds character. Yeah. Paul says, I suffered as a preacher that makes me a better preacher. Yeah. I've suffered for the gospel. Talk to Don sometime. Talk to Pastor Don sometime. He loves to read these stories of, about people in persecuted countries. Yes. And where are all the miracles happening? In places where people are persecuted. Yes. Where are people getting saved by the droves? In places where they're persecuted. In America where we got Everything that we need, we got plastic in our pockets, we got Google accounts, we got Prime accounts, we're sitting back fat and happy, and the gospel is not going forth like it is in those countries. Because what we want from God is comfort. Somebody say it's tight, but it's right. It's tight, but it's right. <laughs> So if we want to know God like Paul, we know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his son. Look at this number eight. Paul says, a uh, 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 writer says, some fragrances God can only release through broken vessels. Yeah, the last one I put there, God uses cracked pots. <laughs> You ever heard that story? There was this, this young lady that, that uh, uh, she was in a country where she had to walk miles uh, to go get water from the, from the stream. But the old clay pot she had had a crack in it. Yes. And so she'd fill it up. And every day when she walked back, the, 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 the cracks would let out water along the side of the road. And one day when spring came, the flowers grew up because there was a crack in the pot that let water out onto those along the side of the road so that something fusible could come up. I want to let you know, cracks in you will let the light of Jesus come out into somebody's life. God uses crack pots. God uses people that have been through something. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> so 
says, number nine says, God permits vessels to be jarred so that some of the treasure can spill out. <laughs> Let me just run you through this. Look, look back at the white sheet. I'll give you these. So because of this, Paul was confident. He knew he would have ultimate victory. So he wrote these, uh, I guess, uh, things that just were just just to persist himself. He says, we are hard pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. Yeah. Can I give you a more contemporary? So we're stressed, but we're not stressed out. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, we're, we're stressed, but we're not stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> Look what he said, we're perplexed, and, and perplexed means we're at wit's end. We, 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 don't, we don't know the answer. And, and it's, uh, the, there's wheels and they're turning and grinding, trying to figure out the answer. So we might be perplexed, but we're not in despair. Right. We're, we're persecuted, meaning that we've been knocked down. But we, we've been knocked down, but we, we're not knocked out. Right. We've been struck down. We've been struck with a blow, but we're not destroyed. So he says, I'm confident. We know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us up. Yes. Yes. Number, number five, number three on faith says, so therefore, we don't lose heart. I forgot to teach. We do not lose heart. It says outside, this outward exterior. Remember Paul says, uh, there was given, we'll see it a little bit later, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. We don't know what that is. Some people think it was an ailment. There are all kinds of theories about what it is. But he says, this outward man is getting older, getting tired, or getting more wrinkled. But inside, every day God's renewed. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable on God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. God is renewing us day by day. And then he goes on to say, uh, when you look at my troubles, when you look at your troubles, when you look at Paul's troubles in light of eternity, they are light and they're momentary. If it lasts two years, what is that compared to eternity? If it lasts 10 years, what is that compared to eternity? So Paul says these light and their momentary troubles, they actually work for us. Yeah. Because they work work of far exceedingly weight and glory. So he says, because of all of this, what do we do? We're not looking at the things down here, because the things down here are going to pass away. So we keep fixing our eyes on the things that are unseen, because those things are eternal. Uh, I want to let you know, we're all just garbage. But we have something special on the inside of us. The light of the knowledge of the glory of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. And then next time, when we, if you look over and you want to read it, read in chapter uh, 5. He moves from talking about uh, the fact that here we're just jars of clay. But for those, in chapter 5, he begins to talk about, hey, we got a new body that's waiting for us. In heaven. He says this old body is going to be cast off. We got a new one that God's, God's made.